Hey everyone, I'm currently in the middle of renovating our bathroom and as a part of that I need to switch out all the outlets and switches and everything. Uh, so as part of that I need to replace our GFCI outlets as well. Um, so I just want to do a quick tutorial to show you how to go about replacing your GFCI outlets. Before I jump into that install though, just to give you a quick bit of background. So the reason you need GFCIs in your bathroom in the first place is because those outlets are near running water or wet locations. Uh, so it's an extra safety measure in case water happens to get into the outlet, this will automatically cut off the power so that you don't risk any type of electrical shock. Now, as long as the outlets in your bathroom are wired up correctly, you don't actually need a GFCI switch into every single location. As long as it's wired correctly, you just need one GFCI switch where the power is coming into the room and then any other outlets, such as that one over there, does not actually need to be the more expensive GFCI switch because it will be protected by the one that I'm going to install over here. Just to show the comparison between a normal switch and a GFCI switch, on the normal one, you're gonna have two gold terminals on one side, two silver terminals on the other side. On the gold side, you can put the hot wire into either one of these, and you can put the neutral wire into either one on the silver side, and then you just have the ground wire. So you don't have to worry about where exactly you put the wire, whether it's the top or the bottom. So it's pretty simple with a standard outlet. Now with the GFCI outlet, it's much looks much similar on the back side. So you have the two silver terminals the two gold terminals, and then you got your ground terminal underneath. Now you have to look closely at the back here, but you can see it's actually telling you the top ones over here need to actually be the load, and then the bottom ones need to be the line. So the line here just means the power coming from your circuit breaker, and then the top is gonna to be the power going from this GFCI outlet to any other outlets that are in the room, like the one I showed you behind me earlier. Now, if you're replacing an existing GFCI, you can just look at the back to see where the wires were already inputted and then just make sure to line them up the same on your new one. But if you already took out the wires or you're installing one where one used to not be located, you need to figure out which of these wires is the line coming from the breaker and then which ones are the load going to the other switches or the other outlets in the room. The way to do that is to leave, once you get it all on wire, to leave the power on at the breaker, and then you can just grab a multimeter, or if you just have a voltage tester pen, to go to those wires and test each one of them to see which one's actually giving you a reading. So I can see here my meter is reading 100 and roughly 120 volts, a little bit higher. So I know these are the ones coming from the breaker because they still have power even when they're uh, not connected to the actual outlet. So if I measure the top ones here, I'm getting essentially zero. It's reading as two volts, but it's essentially zero there. So I know these are ones that need to go into the load terminals on the back of my GFCI. So now you know which of these wires is the line and which one's the load, but it's important at this step, don't start just trying to wire this up because those lines are still hot at this point. So make sure you go back down to your breaker box and turn off power before you actually wire this up. Okay, we've got power turned off to the breaker. I know these are dead now at this point, but if you want to be extra safe, then you can take your meter or your voltage tester and just test these out one more time, making sure you're not getting a true high voltage 120 reading on either one of those sets of lines. Okay, looks good. Okay, so in my case, these are actually inverted from what the previous GFCI was. So uh, the lines down here, I'm gonna to need to move those to the top of the outlet box and then these ones here are, are the load so those are going to go to the bottom based on how uh, this particular GFCI outlet, GFCI outlet is positioned. Okay now we just need to wire each one of those wires into the appropriate terminal on here. And just a reminder, the black wires go into the gold terminals, the white wires go into the silver terminals. And just to show you, the wire will actually just slide right into that hole there. And then when you tighten down the screw, it's gonna make sure it's making a good connection. It's not gonna fall out of there.
Okay, and then it's important to not forget that ground wire either. So there's that green ground screw you can see on the bottom there. We'll go ahead and slot that in, tighten that up as well. Now before you screw this back into the wall and put the plate on, it's always best to go down to the breaker, turn the power back on, and then just plug something in to make sure it's actually working as expected. Okay, the power's back on at the breaker, so now I'm just gonna use this simple plug here. It's actually a smart plug, it'll light up whenever it's powered on, just to make sure both outlets are powered as expected. Okay, so you can see that's lighting up, that's working. Now let's go over to the other outlet. Just check the same thing as well. This is the one that's on the load side. A little hard to see there, but you can see it's lighting up. So both outlets are currently working. Now let's go ahead and test out the actual GFCI safety functionality of it. So there's a couple of buttons here. You can see there's a test button on the left and a reset button on the right. Every GFCI will have these. They might just look a little different. So if you press test here, that's simulating what would happen if water was to get into this outlet and cause it to short. Okay, so you'll see that it lights up red to notify you it's currently activated and this light goes off to let you know there's no power. Now you should also, for completeness, test the other outlet, make sure this one's not working anymore as well, because this is supposed to be protected down line from that. You can see it's not working there, so that's good and come back over here. And then if you ever notice yours is tripped, all you have to do is hit that reset button. You'll hear it click. Okay, and now it should be fully functional again, as you can see it is. So now we're gonna do button it back up. Before you do that, you really should go back down to the breaker. You don't wanna accidentally put your fingers between those terminals on the hot side and these terminals on the neutral side when you're trying to do that. So I'll go ahead and turn that off real quick. Okay, breaker's off now. I spent a little bit of time just fudging with the wires to make sure they're gonna go back into the box. These tend to be a little bit bulky because they're usually the 12 gauge wire, which is a little bit thicker. But I did get those screws started on the top and bottom. I'll just go ahead and finish those off. Last step then, of course, is just to go ahead and throw that plate cover on top of that outlet. Okay, and you're all set. Thank you for watching. If you got value from this video, I appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. If you want to be notified when more DIY home improvement projects come up, uh, go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you here on the next one. Thank you.